Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah and I'm here with Pastor Craig Roders. Today is our second part with Pastor Mike Shreve. Mike Shreve and his wife Elizabeth reside in Cleveland, Tennessee, where they pastor a church named The Sanctuary. He is an author of 15 books and the founder and director of a Christian publishing company called Deeper Revelation Books, with three Amazon number one bestsellers, including his most popular, 65 Promises from God for Your Child, and his newest book titled, Who Am I? He has traveled through the United States and overseas as an evangelist and missionary since 1971. Prior to his conversion to Christianity in fall of 1970, he was a student of an Indian guru and then a yoga teacher for four Florida universities and he ran a yoga ashram. Then he encountered the Lord Jesus Christ that changed his heart and his life and his worldview all in one day's time. He has his own podcast, is a teacher, author, publisher, pastor, evangelist, and is a pas passionate follower of Jesus Christ. Last week, Mike Sh Shreve shared his testimony and why Christians shouldn't practice yoga. And he has this book right here, Seven Reasons Why Christians Should Not Practice Yoga. And if you haven't watched that video, you can go back and watch that. The second part, we'll be discussing how the new age has infiltrated the church and how to guard against it. So now here is part two with Pastor Mike Shreve. Amen. And that even right. goes back to um, just even what we're desiring, right? And like, cause we're charismatic. We, we believe in the gifts and we believe the gifts are for today and like first Corinthians 14. And, but we also in 1440, we want to do it decently in order. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people who I've seen come out of the new age, they, automatically then go into maybe like Pentecostal and charismatic, but then they kind of get freaked out because it's almost too much, like too close to mm. that, what they were experiencing before. But I think that what our desire is, is we want spirit and truth. Like we don't want just one or the other. Yeah. We, we know that it c goes hand in hand. And so that's what we want to ask you. It's like, how do we find that balance? Because a lot of people, totally throw it all out, throw out any gifts or anything because people have done it wrong. So they're like, oh, we're just not going to do it. And so our desire is we want to move in healing. We want to move in prophecy, speak in tongues, decently in order. But let me, uh, we don't want, yeah. You yeah, can let go. me share. I want to share, just kind of give to kind of ask the question. Again, I don't want to preach, but <laughs> is I was a Baptist. I was Catholic like you, Roman Catholic but really didn't do anything in my life. I didn't have any relation with God. It was just something we did, tradition. And then I got saved radically. The guy who led me to the Lord, we went to a Baptist church. So I was saved Baptist, went to Baptist Bible College. And and I was taught tongues were not for today and all that stuff. And I was just, you know, and I, I'd been around extreme charismatics that said, if you don't speak in tongues, you're not saved. Hmm. So that kind of put a bad taste in my mouth. And so I went to a charismatic church where I uh, went because my girlfriend went there at the time to disprove tongues, to show it. Yeah. And God touched me radically. Amen. And uh, I told you this off camera. And uh, so I was very open to the gift. And I saw incredible moves of God. Yeah. People healed, people delivered, uh, you know, the presence of God. We just I saw once the Shekinah glory over the, you know, just wept, just undone. I mean, literally like the like the priest where I couldn't move all of us. And I thought I ran to the altar and I thought oh no I'm making a scene and then I, I looked up after about 15 minutes and everyone was at the altar so I knew I wasn't by myself and it was so cool so I've seen it but then I was telling you off camera but this is for the people who are listening I then about 95 uh, I went to a service here in Tucson where uh, this it was the Toronto blessing and every, it was the big thing back then that started in 94 but it was about a year after it started and so everyone was interested in it so I went there charismatic, open mind, you know, yeah. was convinced the gifts are for today now, wasn't a sensation anymore. And all of a sudden I saw the barking, mm. I saw the shrieking, and I didn't really even have a problem at first with the roaring and all this and even the shaking because I've shaked, I've trembled. But I mean, this was like convulsing. And I remember just kind of getting a weird feeling. And as I said, people said I was prophetic or very discerning. And I remember going, something just doesn't feel quite right. Yeah. But yet I was open is my point. But then all of a sudden, this guy's wife from the Toronto Blessing, one of the leaders, uh, gave a prophetic word. And as I told you off camera, the word was really right on. There's going to be streams in the de desert. There's going to be revival. I don't know if you've heard, but I forget some prophet 
big in the in the kind of the charismatic movement said there's going to be revivals going to start in Tucson it's going to start in Arizona so I mean we've been prophesied a lot we had the Jesus movement here but all of a sudden uh, she gives the word and she starts shaking violent you know I mean just so violent I can't even mimic it because mm-hmm. it hurt but and then I so I just was so freaked out but I was like but the word was right on but the manifestation seems yep. so strange and then I went, I waited till afterwards because I was a pastor. I waited till everyone was gone. And then I asked them off, you know, when they weren't up front and when no one's around, I said, so what, how do you, where do you see this biblically? Yeah. And, I, and I told you before that I, you know, there's some pretty strange things in the Old Testament of prophets doing, mm-hmm. but it usually was to show the shame of Israel, right? There's a purpose to the weirdness. There's a method to the madness. Mm-hmm. But I asked them and they've been doing it for a year and they said, we don't know. We have no idea. And I said, Hey, wait, you're a prophet, but you have no idea. And so I just, I, I was like, so I, I don't understand that. And all I could say is the, the Quakers of the 17th century. And I just said, but how do we know that was mm-hmm. biblical? Because remember when Peter, when it seems as if you're drunk and they were kind of kind of devalidating it, he could take them to Joel 2, too, and say, here's what was written in the last days, your sons and daughters. So what say you to that? Mm-hmm. Because yeah. that, I mean, and then kind of go on. I then had to, they came to our church. And so people would do crazy manifestations. I told you like one lifting barking, their lifting their leg on a speaker like uh, a dog. So I went to this person and said, uh, brother, you're out of order. I don't yeah. think that's, that's a not spirit, but isn't the Holy morning. Spirit. The Holy Spirit would not pee on a speaker <laughs> in the church. And he goes, you're quenching the spirit, brother. You know, mm-hmm. and you're a Pharisee. And I'm just like, oh, well, my pastor allowed it because he said this is what the people want. So I actually was so hurt and disillusioned, sad to say, like what Mariah was saying, yeah. I almost went, I went back to the Baptist church here in That's town, so left, I, I kind of left the church because the pastor said, well, this is what the people want. And I literally, Pastor Mike, I literally almost, I didn't throw it out, but I said, I can't yeah. find a church yep. that does it as it says in, in, in 1 Corinthians 14, 40, decent that does it decently order. in order. And so I just sort of said, you know what, I'm going to be play it safe and I'm yep, just going to go yep. to Baptist where I don't have to experience any weirdness. But then, you know, after, you know, that once you've experienced the power of God, you can't do that. So then I've kind of, so then God sort of started my own, we started our own church and now I'm trying like you Amen. to have the fullness of the spirit, yep. you know, spirit and truth, not, yep. you know, you know what I'm saying, Mike, it seems like that you either have churches that really have spirit, but don't yep. have a lot of truth yep. or sound doctrine, but then you have churches that have a lot of doctrine and zero spirit, no spirit or worship. And I'm going, man, I really want to find that balance because Jesus said those are the worshipers he seeks, you know, yes, the Father seeks. And so anyway, enough <laughs> preaching. What say you on that, you know? Well, there's uh, an old saying I've uh, said for years that the spirit alone leads to fanaticism. The word alone leads to formalism. Amen. But when you get the word and the spirit together, you've got fertile ground for Amen. miracles and Amen. transformation. Yes. And so I agree with you 100%. I'll pick out one particular thing. Now, first, I want to revert back to what we were talking about, put a cap on that, and then proceed into this conversation about uh, new age type of things invading the church. Uh, you've used the word truth many, many times. And I think the big issue with respect to the world outside of Christianity is whether or not the truth is subjective or objective. And that's the key and critical issue. Because if the truth is subjective, you can have your truth, I can have my truth, we can both be right simultaneously, and anything goes. But if the truth is objective, then it's the same for everyone, regardless of my own private interpretation. And uh, it's similar to A great example, and I use this with Hindu people quite often, Uh, in the second century, Ptolemy said the earth was the center of the solar system and the sun revolved around the earth. But then over a thousand years later, Copernicus came along and said, no, it's heliocentric. The sun is at the center and the earth revolves around the sun. If they were contemporaries discussing the nature of the solar system, they could not have said to each other, you can have your truth and I can have my truth and we can both be right. Because one has to be wrong and the other right. Uh, They can both be wrong. But if one of them is right, it's at the expense of the other being wrong. Mm -hmm. And in like manner uh, with New Agers, I think the biggest issue you need to force 
to begin with is whether or not truth is objective or subjective. Mm -hmm. And if it's objective, then it's not privately interpreted. Now, shifting gears a little bit and going up into the charismatic world. Can I say say something on, Pastor Mike, I want to say something on that. I was a missionary at a liberal Lutheran church, and uh, ELC church, and uh, it's a long story, but I was there, and I never forget, in a staff meeting, the pastor said to me, or one of the pastors said, praise God that there's many ways to the Father. Hmm. Our way just happens to be Jesus Christ. Well, there's a couple other Christians there, the secretaries were, they elbowed me, I was the Mikey, you know, that say the tough thing. So I said, well, you know, so they pushed me. So I said, I'd like to believe that. That'd be really nice, right? It'd make our job a lot easier as pastors, right? Because you could just be all inclusive. And I said, but Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, John 14, 6, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And I mean, all of a sudden, it's like Tourette syndrome started, and they said, you blankety-blank, bigoted, born again, you know, blankety-blank. And I said, so you guys aren't born again? I said, because so, Jesus said, if you're not born again, you know. But I mean, and the, the pastor finally said this to me, this is how, and this is a mainstream Lutheran church. You know, this is a big church in town, and they end up firing me too much. Years. But he said to me, he said, I only believe in the red. And hmm. I said, no, you don't. No. I said, John 14, 6 is the red. <laughs> Jesus yeah, said that. Yeah. You know, but it's just so amazing how even mainstream churches now yeah. are believing what you just said is not true, that you can have many truths. And what I like to say, I don't know if you agree with this, I say, well, if Jesus isn't the only way, because you know, people say, why do you think you're so exclusive? I said, every other religion is due. You got to wake up at 3.30 in the morning, pray. You got to do all this stuff. You got to work so hard. But what? Jesus is, it's finished. It's done. Mm-hmm. If you try to do all this stuff to get saved or get the favor of God, then you end up feeling, like I said, when you live your life and do, you end up feeling like do-do, right? Because you <laughs> never do enough. You never are good enough. You never yeah. reach the consciousness enough. And what happens? But Christianity, it's done. And he had to pay that brutal death to pay the price for my sins, your sins, our failures. If we're honest, we've all sinned. And we know that, right? I mean, I've talked to, we've been doing a few interviews now, and everyone said when they're in the new age or when they were drinking, they knew deep down in their heart that they were sinners, but they were trying to deceive themselves. And they said, here's what all of them said, Mike. They said, I wish somebody would have been bold enough to tell me Jesus is not a way. He's the only way. And I'm like, really? And I don't know if they would really, you know, they're saying that now, but... But I've said that to my new age aunt who's very, you know, Gandhi-esque, you know, ooh, just love everybody. Mm-hmm. But when I said Jesus is the only way, and when I said, you know, John, 1 John 2, anyone who says he has come to know him must walk in the same spirit as he did, or he's a liar and the truth is not him, all of a sudden, F-bombs were flying everywhere. You get out of here, you, you bigoted loser. You know, they kicked me out of the house at 11 o'clock at night in the middle of Phoenix, you know, so it's 110 out and I'm sleeping in my truck. So, yeah. I mean... I didn't, I didn't feel the love, you know what I mean? But it's like, that's really an issue that really separates true Christianity from just religion is that you have to believe, as Jesus said, you're either for me or against me. He can't just be a way, right? Well, I think that's why people also like New Age. It's because they like everyone, yeah. except the Christian. They don't like Jesus <laughs> and they don't, but they like the everyone true, and they Christian. try to find, and, yeah. and they want to be, that's what you always talk about. There's a difference between being nice we're saying the thing that um, just flattering people and telling them what they want to hear, like you're a good person, you're not a sinner, but then being kind and truly loving like Jesus, willing to say the hard thing because you see that what they're doing is leading them to hell and you care about them. And so I think like with your story, just people being able to just be bold and, you know, share the truth like that guy and follow Christ. And so I think that's what we're praying for because even what you're gonna start talking about now in the church, even the church, we're scared of telling people, hey, that's a little off because what? They get mad. You offended me instead of saying, I want the truth yeah. and I want to be humbled. And I think it's that humility and yeah. willing to be wrong and also that kindness, which yeah. leads to repentance. And I, so, you know, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to talk over yeah, you, Pastor Mike, <laughs> but we just, I love your spirit so much that I just feel <laughs> yes. like you're my, you're my wife would say, this is like a long lost brother. But, yeah. uh, but I want to say this is kind of what I base yeah. my ministry on because I was so deceived and so. I almost sent myself to hell that I base it on Ezekiel 33, 3, where he says, the watchman, he says, if you see the enemy coming and you do not warn the people, their blood will be upon your head. But if you warn the people, 
then their blood will be upon their own head. I had a best friend who committed suicide shortly after I got saved that I got into drugs and everything, and I felt so terrible, but the Lord showed me. He brought him to my house at 3 in the morning, and he rejected God because he said, who drew him to your house? Who drew him to ask you about Jesus, but he didn't want to make him Lord, and I didn't know about deliverance then, so he ran out screaming, you're not going to trick me into Jesus. But I felt so bad, but I realized, no, Jesus drew him, but he chose to reject Jesus. And even though I'm sad for him, I told him the truth. I spoke the truth in life. He saw the change. He, did, he couldn't deny that. I didn't know the scripture because I was only a couple months on the Lord. But, you know, and so mm -hmm. I just really want to be someone because what happened is he spit in my face and said, you effing born again, you loser. And I remember getting so mad because he spit in my face in front of all my friends. And I was a tough guy. So I'd have never allowed that before. And I was newly saved. And I went, how I'd like I could still beat you up. And I, but I, I remember pounding my steering wheel saying, to hell with you, Glenn, to hell with you. If you want to go to hell, fine. And all of a sudden, God, because I was a baby Christian, gave me a vision of the white throne judgment. I didn't even know what the white throne judgment, but I saw we were in heaven. I was splashing around with Jesus in the water of life. I'm joking about that. Mm -hmm. but, you know, I was just having a great time. And all of a sudden, I see this line, and I see my friend Glenn, and he's crying, and he's saying, Pastor, he's going, Craig, why didn't you tell me? If you knew Jesus was the only way, why didn't, why you, didn't you, tell you tell me? me? Why didn't you tell me? And he's just crying, and I'm like, uh, uh uh, and then after that, I said, no more. And praise God, God gave me that, that dream because Told I them. did share Jesus with him, even though he spit on me again. But he then, I had no guilt that I didn't share the love of Jesus with Amen. him. Amen. Share the truth. Anyway, we'll let you talk. <laughs> well, he's like, what's the question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to reconnect he's with like, where we're at. What yeah, do where you want we're, me to answer? Uh, what, what I was asking about is the, like what we were saying is about the, is about the, what? You want to do it? You go for it. Yeah, so the, Main question is just like, we've seen new age stuff kind of creep into the church. So we just want to hear what you're say saying, like how have we opened the doors and how do, once it, it is in, how do we, you know. How do you be hungry sure. for the spirit yet not get a false spirit? Yeah. There you go. Okay. <laughs> right. Well, you just have to be humble about uh, what you allow in your life and teachable. Yeah. And and discerning. Uh, I do uh, know back in the day when the, that movement hit in Toronto, I used to preach in Canada quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And I would have people come to my meetings that would have these weird twitches and mm -hmm. grunts. Even if you were eating in a restaurant with them after church, uh, spontaneously, without warning, they'd show these manifestations. Mm -hmm. And it just felt so evil mm. and so Don't. wrong. And I knew that somewhere, someone had opened the door mm. to wrong manifestations. Yep. And then I've seen Christians go too far the other direction, as you mentioned, and, and just shun all mm. of the move of God altogether which is wrong. You don't want yep. to throw the baby out with the bathwater mm -hmm. and you don't want to recoil from ca the counterfeit and throw away the true mm -hmm. because a counterfeit is not a good counterfeit unless it looks That's almost right. exactly yeah. like the true. Yep. And so there are times when you may shake under the power of God. I have, but not this weird, wild, crazy stuff yeah. that you see sometimes uh, that is very similar to the manifestations that take place during uh, yoga impartations mm -hmm. where uh, a guru uh, offers Shaktipat to his disciples yeah. and, and they go through the jerks and the quaking and so forth. Is that so called forth. the Kriya? Is that called the Kriya when you, when you do the... The next, well, the, the next. Well, is the, that, the Kriya that? are like supernatural manifestations. Mm. Okay. Uh, mm. But uh, let, let me give you a for instance. Uh, back in the days when the laughing movement was so yeah. popular. And I think what happens is people fall out of love with Jesus and they want the new charismatic megatrend. Yeah. And there were a couple of churches I was invited to preach at that were into it. And I, when I got exposed to it, I could not go along with it yeah. because the the man speaking, say, before I got up, would be speaking about something very serious yeah. and very uh, somber uh, in the tone of what was being shared. And yet people out in the audience would be cackling and laughing uh, in a hysterical way. And it was a complete disconnect yeah. 
the the word that was being shared was of a different emotion, a different tone than the reaction that was taking place. Yeah. And I, I likened it. I, I left and, and thought, I can't intermingle with this. I can't endorse this at all. And what I told someone is that if a human being was saying something very serious, like uh, reporting that my uncle died or my aunt died, and then they begin laughing hysterically, mm -hmm. what do they say? Yeah. Crazy. They say that yeah. person is crazy. Yeah. That person is insane. Why? Because their emotions and their words don't mash, Man. mesh. They don't match. And in like manner, if the word of God is going forth under inspiration from the pulpit, but the Holy Spirit is out in the audience engendering uh, yeah. a totally different response emotionally, then God is insane. Yeah. Yep. God is crazy yeah. Yeah. because his word and his spirit work in unison. Yeah. They don't yeah. work contrary to each other. Yeah. And so I could not go along with that movement. Yeah. Yeah. But do I say that there's never a time where you laugh in the presence of oh, God? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. There are times yeah. where the joy of the Lord is so powerful and That's abundant strange. and beautiful that it's natural and spontaneous to laugh in the spirit. Amen. So I don't want to throw the baby Amen. out with the bath water. Amen. I do believe in healing. I believe in prophecy. I believe in speaking in tongues. I believe in the nine gifts of the spirit. Amen. But I also believe that there is a challenging counterfeit going on in Christianity yeah. Yeah. right yeah. now. And people need to learn how to discern the difference between it's the like two. It's like what I was saying to you. We want to be charismatics with the seatbelt of the Holy Spirit on, right? We don't, we, want, we don't want to fly through the windshield. We want to be open to the fullness of God. But the God I know of the Bible does things decently. Or he might do some things that seem strange at the moment. But the end, it'll always, you'll see, you'll understand the method to what seems strange. You know, like when you're saying that your friend being open to pick up a hitchhiker <laughs> I was thinking about I don't know if I told you this but there was this girl I was ministering to who was a lesbian and uh and uh, this is when I was newly saved so I'm radical and you know just do anything and the Lord said at three in the morning the Lord said go to her window so I live in the same apartment and just pray put your hands towards her window at three in the morning now you know you could get in some serious trouble if that's not God right and I'm doing this and I'm like okay this could be a stalker this is weird and all of a sudden the blinds open and she goes, and she wasn't even scared. I was scared. I went, oh, like this. And she goes, I said to God just now, if you're send real, something. send something. Show me that you're real. Bring someone to me just like your guy. You know, and all of a sudden, here I am with my hands prayed. She wasn't even afraid. And I'm saying, you know, we need, you know, we believe God does it. But that was strange. If some police officer saw me do that, I'd probably be arrested. But because it was God, she knew it was God. I knew it was God. And even though at the moment I was thinking, this, this, this looks a little strange, it proved to be God. She turned her life around. She broke up with her girlfriend. She gave her life to Christ and was walking with the Lord. So, I mean, we have to realize that God, sometimes in the moment, the front end, it's going to seem a little strange. You know, I don't know if you've heard someone say it. It's kind of like a, a needle point. You know, when you see the, the, we're seeing the backside of the needle point. But once we get to heaven, we're going to see the beautiful design of everything God did. Yeah. And you know what I mean? So I think that's what we have yeah. to realize is that God's ways are not our ways. Sometimes no. he does things totally different than what I think yeah. should be done. But it's always for purpose. It's always for yeah. blessing. He doesn't just be weird to be and, weird. And it can be controlled because even speaking in tongues, like like for me, we, we all speak in tongues. And it's not like it's like possession where you just can't stop talking. And how these people, when I've seen things and even like we've said like, hey, this is, they get mad at you. Like I can't control it. And it's like, if it's something you can't, stop because i believe we all have free will we can then that that kind of just yeah. makes it suspect is that a demonic spirit like our uh, how is that the holy spirit because i believe that you when the holy spirit comes upon you like it is powerful like you feel like i've been in the presence of god where you're just weeping and you're just overwhelmed but it usually leads you to repentance and humility and a joy not a pride or trying to be seen or look at me it always i feel like it really does direct others to god and and i think that in seeing that i think that's a good way because we need to pray for the gift of discernment i think that's the only thing how to kind of and not like, uh, we need the yeah. gift of discernment because without that we, and we, that's yeah. like we we don't know but we also have the bible we can yeah. 
bring it back to the truth of God's word. And I think that they're just like, oh, well, we don't really care about that or, or yeah. forget that. And it's like, that's when you're getting, it's getting scary because you're giving into the things of this world. And I like what you said, Pastor Mike, where you said we have to be teachable. teachable I was always taught humble. a disciple is fat. And I'm kind of related to that. <laughs> no, he it says it's faithful, uh, available, available, and teachable. teachable. And sometimes, you're, like yeah. you were saying, that the spirit of a prophet is subject to other prophets. But a lot of these people say, you know, don't judge me, brother. Do no, you quench the spirit? Do. And we should always, right? One of the spirits, uh, one of the fruits of the spirit is self-control. But we should also always be teachable to say, hey, judge, you know, because I, I don't know if you move in the prophetic a lot, but whenever I give a prophetic word. I believe that if it's really God, it'll be proven by the Amen. fruit of it, right? Yeah. If I if I say, like, I never forget, I told this lady who had had an abortion, I said, I really sense a spirit of death on you. And she goes, no, nope, no, nope, you missed it. No, nope, no, nope, not at all. Totally wrong. And then all of a sudden, I just, so I she walked out of my office, and she was in about 10 minutes later, the Lord said, call her up. And she was still in the same, she was in our church, but I said, call her up. And all of a sudden she's weeping. <laughs> yeah. And I go, and she goes, I guess you might have been right. And I go, were you going to tell me this? You know, because I thought I was totally missed it. But it's proven because why? I spoke the word and God confirmed it by, it. It, it you know, there was a manifestation in her life. Amen. And I think as, you know, I, I always got mad when people give words, you know, after the fact. So oh, I knew that, but they didn't say it before. You know, I mean, there's no real way to prove it. And so anyway, I'm getting, I'm digress, <laughs> but. Uh, anyway, um, well, I think an important point, a very important point, is that we are in a spiritual war, mm. and we do have an adversary, and his yeah. name is Satan, and he's yeah. called the great deceiver that deceives Angel everyone who comes into the world. And if he's the deceiver, then he and those demonic underlings that work with him are focused on deceiving people one way or the other. Now, I believe Satan and his minions would much rather Christians be powerless, mm. that they not believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, not believe in prophecy and tongues and healing, yeah. because then they're less effective in changing the world in a radical Amen. way. Oh, yeah. But if he can't get people to get toned down spiritually to that degree, then satanic powers will try and push them to another extreme where they get weird to the point where even the world can't relate to them. Yeah. They're off the edge of the page. They're just too far gone. And that's what's happened. The enemy is an extremist. He wants you one way or the yeah. other because it invalidates you, it disqualifies you, and it makes you ineffective and unable to effectively advance the kingdom of God. I remember the uh, one of the last times I was in India, I, I did not realize it, but my life hinged on obeying a prophetic word and administering healing. If I had not been under the flow of the Holy Spirit that night, I would be dead. I would wow. not be doing this interview wow. because I was preaching in a, a city, Kumbakonam, India, where there had never been a Western missionary hold an outdoor meeting prior to that. There had never been a time uh, to, uh, there had never been a time where there had been someone from outside of India trying to introduce Christianity. Wow. And so uh, that was an affront to a lot of people to begin with. And I didn't know that there was a group of Hindus. Most Hindu people, incidentally, are very gentle and kind individuals. Mm -hmm. They believe in, in tolerance. But uh, this particular group of uh, six Hindu guys were radicals, and they did not want Christianity in their city. And so they thought the best way to stop it was to storm the platform at the end of my message, beat me up publicly, then tie me to the bumper of their car and drag me through their city till I was dead. And I asked them the next day why, why they came up with that plan, why they wanted to yeah. do that to me, because I didn't hate them. Yeah. They said, well, we thought it would discourage uh, missionary activity in our town. I said, well, if I could have felt anything, I probably would have felt discouraged after all yeah, that was exactly. over. Bumpers but, a rough. Yeah. but God had anticipated it all. But the night hinged on my obedience to a prophetic word. Mm. I preached for an hour and I felt the whole time like I was being choked spiritually. Mm. The oh. demonic force was wow. so strong I had to push every word out. It was almost impossible to talk. I felt like I was on the verge of asphyxiation. 
And at the end of my hour long message, I intuitively knew if I gave an invitation, no one would respond or very few would respond mm -hmm. because I could feel this veil of ignorance over the audience. And they mm -hmm. still didn't comprehend what I was saying about Jesus dying on the cross and rising from the dead, etc. And it just didn't connect yet. Mm -hmm. And then God dropped a word in my spirit. He said, call the deaf and tell them if what you preached is true, every deaf person will hear again. Wow, and if good. what you preach is not true, they won't hear mm -hmm. and they can kick you out of their city. And uh, I like to tell people that I was bold and courageous and not <laughs> fluttering inside at all, but I was scared to oh, yeah. death. Yeah, that's, to a, that that's a yes or no just, answer there. Yeah. Everything's gonna hinge on this, yeah. but I knew it was God. And so I put it out there and they brought seven deaf people to me. Four were totally deaf and three were deaf in one ear. And uh, the word that went through my mind to begin with was, you better pray for one of the ones with one deaf ear first. <laughs> Take the easiest. Get the ball rolling and then pray for the other worst That's cases. Great. And uh, thankfully, thank God, I got yeah. angry at that, uh, at that moment of unbelief. And yeah. so I yeah. intentionally, Same. with a hardest. little righteous anger, said, bring me somebody totally deaf because <laughs> my God is able. And they brought me a young man, 23 years old, that was deaf in both ears. He'd been deaf for five years. Wow. And I began to pray for him, not wow. knowing that behind me, six Hindu men were coming up the stairwell with a big sledgehammer. Oh, wow. One of them had a big sledgehammer. There was a 20-foot high gate that was supposed to prevent break-ins. And there was a big padlock on the gate. Well, while I'm praying for this guy, Suddenly, I hear this crunching, crashing sound. I have no idea what it's about. The preachers on the platform are all distracted, turning around and looking. And it was these Hindu guys hitting the padlock with the sledgehammer. Wow. And in the middle of my prayer for this guy, suddenly the gate swings open. Six men come running toward me. And, and at first, I have no idea what's going on. And right at that moment, God chooses to heal this guy. Wow. And he wow. jumps out of my hands and starts screaming, I can hear, I can <laughs> hear. And the whole crowd goes wild with ecstasy because it's a genuine miracle. Wow. And That's the awesome. head of the Hindu radical group stopped dead in his tracks because I didn't find out till the next day. But he was the next door neighbor wow. of the guy that just got healed. Oh, so he knew. So he wow. knew. Wow. It was not fake. Wow. And he walked over and whispered in his ear and he repeated it back. And he whispered in his other ear and he repeated it back. He shook his head in amazement. He called all his friends over and, and had them test him. And he did the same. And they were all talking among themselves. And I could hear uh, sometimes they spoke broken English. He said, it is a miracle. It is a, a real miracle. <laughs> I assumed it was a checking committee appointed by the pastors to verify the miraculous for the people. Oh, and so when that guy got healed, I prayed for the second person and had the checking committee check. <laughs> and these are the bumper guys, right? These are the guys who are going to yeah, tell you. Yeah, wow, guys that were amazing. out there to kill me. That's amazing. And they checked the second one. The second one was healed. The third one, the fourth wow. one, fifth, sixth, seventh. They all got their healing. I gave an invitation and probably about 500 Hindu people found the Lord. Very and true. these guys asked to see me the next day and they explained their plot and told me what they intended to do. And uh, praise God. That's Amen. Awesome. Uh, like I said, I wouldn't be here Amen. in and, this interview. Is it, and that's just if I evidence. Listen to the prophetic, Amen. dare to speak the prophetic yeah. and believe in healing. Amen. And I have, I have encountered many beloved New Agers who have come to the Lord Jesus who got turned off by the extremism yes. and recoiled back yeah. to a powerless Christianity yeah. where they never ask God for speaking in tongues or healing or the prophetic, or if they ask God for healing, they say, oh God, if it be your will, they don't understand the power yeah. of speaking the word with authority. Amen. And, and so they've stripped themselves of a part of their inheritance. Mm -hmm. And I do believe we need to find the proper balance between the Amen. two. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I, I want to ask this kind of to, to end this segment, but I want to ask this. You know, I was telling you earlier that, um, that uh, the same Toronto blessing, because a lot of our movements today have sort of come out of that movement. You know, and Calvary's real close to that. I don't know if you know that, but John Wimber, Vineyard. who started the Vineyard, 
which, you know, the Toronto blessing was a vineyard thing, but it broke from Calvary because they didn't believe Calvary was sort of moving the gifts enough. So vineyard. So I was more of a vineyard guy yeah. than a Calvary guy. But then when the Toronto, whoa, you know, it's too much. But yeah. I, what I, one of the guys, the guy, I won't say his name because I'm going to honor you, but the guy who started the Toronto blessing, he was the guy, you know, I'm talking about, right? You know, he's the guy I met with him personally about four years ago here in Tucson. And I saw mm-hmm. pretty much the same thing. So it's been like 22 years doing the same thing. You know, the barking, the shaking, the everything, the craziness, fire, people running. And so I looked at him. I mean, I asked him. He was doing his book signing. And I said, I almost said his name. I said, so uh, what, I said, out of your service, how much of this would you say is flesh? Mm. And he said to me, I already told you, but he said to me, 80%. After 22 years, 80% of what he's doing mm-hmm. at the all after you know ministry is flesh. And I said, and I just looked at him, I tried to be very gracious, but I said, brother, 80%? I said, you know, Galatians says what you began in the spirit ends the flesh. I said, you've never gotten into the really spirit. I mean, I said, I would like it, you know, I'm asking you, Mike, as I say this, but I'd like it to be maybe 20% flesh at the most mm-hmm. and 80% spirit. But I, or I would really like it 95% spirit and yeah. 5% or more like 98. But, but I'm just going, my goodness. And what I'd share with you off camera, and this is, I want to see what your response is this, but I think is because these people, like you said, are very sincere. Yeah. And we don't want to yep. throw out the baby with the bag of water, right? You have not because you asked that. We want to, you know, earnestly desire that you might prophesy. Mm-hmm. We want to earnestly desire the gifts. Amen. But we got to, like you said, discernment. And we also have to walk in the spirit of self-control. That's part of the fruit of the spirit. But I think is what I feel is Matthew 16, 4, where Jesus said a wicked and adulterous yes. generation seeks a sign. Yep. Now hear me. Right, Mike? I mean, a sign from God saved your life. So we love a sign when it's God, Mm -hmm. but we can't just love, right? right? You don't live just for signs. You preach the word, Mm -hmm. and then God confirmed his word with signs and wonders following, which blessed the people and saved your life. But you weren't saying, God, just do a sign. God, just do a sign. God, I mean, you were teaching the word, sharing the good news of Christ, and God confirmed the word. Like it says, you know, like it says in, you know, what is it? Uh, 16, um, Mark 16, 20, you know, you'll lay hands on the sick, cast out demons. But he says these signs, he says, uh, they went forth and preached everywhere and the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. And that's what we want, right? I mean, I have a story just like yours. I, well, I better not say it, I'll get off. <laughs> so what say you about that of how, you know, so how, what would you say to these brothers that have so much manifestation of the flesh and some have even possibly unknowingly or no, I mean, only God knows their heart, Welcome. but have welcomed them a false spirit, a, a mimicking spirit of the holy, of the sign, true signs and wonders. What would you, how do you, what would you say to them to yeah, be able them? to be radically desirous of the gifts, but not open yourself up to a false manifestation? Yeah. Well, I would definitely tell them to pray through and go on a long fast Mm -hmm. and ask God to cleanse themselves of any false manifestation and to desperately seek after the truth uh, because popularity is nowhere near as important as intimacy with God and a true representation of his kingdom. And yes, while radical things are uh, very trendy and Mm -hmm. can uh, produce a movement that is popular for a season, yeah. but it leaves a lot of destruction in its wake. Delusion. And we need the real thing. Right now, our our world is going through craziness. Mm-hmm. And a lot of what's happening is probably legitimate, but there's a, a globalist agenda, I believe, behind yeah. the scenes. Yeah. And uh, and we can't go into that now. That's not really <laughs> That's the topic That's program. <laughs> But we need the, what my point is, is we need the real manifestation of Christianity, not craziness that just intrigues people that are a little weird to begin with sometimes, and they like that weirdness. We need something that intellectual people will respond to, that knowledgeable people will respond to, something so genuine, something so real, it's unquestionable. We need something that it... Well, like Paul said, it, uh, when he when he admonished them to speak in tongues in a wise way, uh, to use wisdom in how they manifested the gift, he said, I'd rather speak five words with my understanding than 10,000 words in tongues. 
Well, this whole interview, I've felt the power of God Amen. while we've been Amen. talking, and I could go off into a manifestation and start speaking in <laughs> yeah, tongues, but it's not going to benefit you, and it's not going to benefit the people that watch. Yeah, and yeah. so the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Amen. And so I know what's needed right now is to speak words with my understanding and with the understanding of those that are watching yeah. this uh, interview. And, and so we've got to be passionate enough to bring real change to society at a very critical time. This is a critical time where we could lose uh, our grip on our national sovereignty, our freedom. Mm. It, it, it could, there, there's such corruption on high levels of government globally no. uh, where there are people that are given over to Luciferianism. Mm. Yeah. We know that. I know that. Yeah. Uh, and we could go into they that. Say the they light, say the, 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 they call him the light. I mean, I just heard, yeah. I don't know if you ever heard of Amir Safadi, the Jewish guy who's a completed Jew, but he speaks and he says, a lot of these people, these globalists say, we've seen Lucifer the light. You know, they, 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 they right out light. say it now. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these guys, and I don't, you know, so it's crazy how it's, you know, 50 years ago it was hidden, but now they say we can come out now because people are open to it. Love the darkness. Yeah, and, and how are we going to respond to that? Mm. Uh, with a laughing meeting where everybody <laughs> laughs? Or, As we or, laugh. or are we going to be the voices yeah. of the prophetic word that bring change to this generation yeah. in a very authoritative way? Yeah. And that's what's needed. Are we going to back off from the gifts and say they don't exist? God yeah. forbid yeah. Jesus yeah. shed his blood yep. so yeah. that we can pray for the sick and yeah. see them healed. And if I deny those, those aspects of the gospel, uh, in a way, I'm re-crucifying the Lord by rejecting something he paid an awesome mm -hmm. price to provide mm -hmm. to his yeah. people. Yeah. And so we can't go either direction. We yeah. need something so profound and impacting that we can get the attention of this generation. Yes. And yeah. it's needed. It's Amen. needed. Desperate. Yeah, I was just I teaching that. about, you know, Isaiah 53, uh, 4 where he says, by his stripes were healed, or five, by his stripes were healed. And, you know, I was taught as a Baptist boy, that just meant redemption of sin, that, you know, he, he healed our sin. But we read, and I believe it's Matthew 8, I think, 17, where he says he not only, t interpreting those wheels, words, sickness and disease, or, or he healed us, he says it, it means sickness and disease. So he didn't just only, Jesus says, you know, he says he healed them, but he not only just healed us redemptively from our sin, but he also healed us from sickness and yeah. disease by his stripes that he bore. And, you know, that's something very powerful. Another, I want to say a neat story, just to, to see if you could concur, you know, about prophetically and seeing the, 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 you know, the Lord's miracle protect your life because they saw the reality of the power of God, that greater was Christ was in you than he was in the Hindus, right? <laughs> and so, um, but I will never forget, I was sitting there, and, and you weren't seeking signs, right? You weren't saying, Lord, just show a sign, show a sign. You were just saying, I want to teach the word, right? I want to proclaim the gospel, and I trust that you're going to do what you, I'm open to what you want to do, right? I mean, you weren't planning on that. That just, yeah, God put it. that on your heart, right? And yeah. so it was birthed from the Spirit, not from you. And, but I remember I was witnessing at this hippie place called Bentley's. It was like before Starbucks was this, this coffee shop at the U of A, University of, of Arizona. And I'm sitting there, and we would just play guitar. We'd all sit kind of like, you know, a bunch of hippies. We'd sit, this was a long time ago, about 30 something years ago. And we would just, and then we would worship, and then we would let all these people just kind of listen and come. And, uh, and I'm preaching, and all of a sudden this guy walks up, stands right behind me, and he goes, so what are you guys about? And I go, oh, we're Christians. Uh, we're just sharing the word. And he goes, oh. And I go, oh, well, what are you about? Oh, I'm into metaphysics, man. And I go, really? You're into metaphysics? And just like you, all of a sudden, he goes, he goes yeah, I have power that you don't know of. And your Christianity doesn't know anything of this power. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, Pastor Mike, he said, challenge him. Yeah. And I said, challenge him. He goes, he says, uh. he says, ask him to do something. Like he said, I, I, I said to him, so you can, can you move things? And he says, yeah. And he goes, mm -hmm. can you push people back? And he goes, yeah, I can knock you over. So I said, well, you pray, and you better be God, right? I said, you pray to knock me over. I'm a big boy. But I said, you pray. And then I'm going to pray mm. that Jesus' love just overwhelms you right yeah. now. So I, all of a sudden, he's just, you know, he gets in this stance, and he kind of rolls his eyes back, and he goes like this to me. And I felt nothing by the grace of God. And then all of a sudden, I just said, Lord, just bless, bless him. him. Just show him your love. And he literally, I promise <laughs> the Lord, Mike, this is the first time I'd ever seen someone go out. But he didn't go out of the bar. He literally flew back and fell on his back, and he goes, you're in the metaphysics. You tricked me. You tricked me. You know what you're doing. And I go, 
Nope, it's Jesus. Jesus. I said, whatever you experience right there is the power of Jesus and the light. He goes, I just saw this bright light and I was throwing back. So then he, I go, it's Jesus. And he goes, I can't believe it's Jesus. So then he got up on these steps, like three steps above me. And he says, let's do it again. We did it again. This time, Pastor Mike, we prayed the same thing. He did his thing, but more intense. He spun around, fell into the bushes. And then mm. He said, he goes, I think your Jesus is really powerful. Yeah. I've never seen a Jesus Amen. like this. So, I mean, Amen. you know, there's the same thing. I mean, that's what we want, right? Amen. We want, I mean, I wasn't planning on, no. you know, getting in a shootout with the, with the <laughs> metaphysics guy, but God does want to display yeah. that greater is Christ is in us than he is in the world. He really does if it's not for our glory, but yes, really for his yeah, glory. And to show people, because, I mean, I remember Paul Yogi Cho said, we tell people, I forget what religion it was in, in, in uh, Korea, but he says all these people, these I think it was Buddhists, but they're healing people, mm -hmm. but we don't heal. He yeah. says that it doesn't work. How can that be that yeah. my God's greater than yours? Amen. He's the one true God, but he doesn't heal. He doesn't deliver. He That's can't. Good point. It, it, yeah. yeah, so I mean, we need to not be to. chasing after signs and wonders, but we need to say, hey, God can prove. He doesn't want you just to chase a sign like Herod. He didn't show say Herod a sign. But when you're yeah. sincerely seeking like you were, like I was, he will do yeah. incredible Just manifestations to grab people. And I think, I don't know if you agree with this, I think it's more of the highways and byways is where I've seen the most radical, like where you were in India, it's usually in the highways and byways that I've seen some of the most radical moves of God yeah. to touch people right in the marketplace. Praise God. Yeah, that's what we need to do. Amen. And Amen. Uh, that's what I, uh, I would like to do. One of my... Uh, projects that I'm very involved in is called the True Light Project. And one of my goals is to take witnessing teams to major new age or occult events around the world, mm -hmm. like uh, the uh, summer solstice at Stonehenge. Oh, wow. uh, wouldn't it be great to have 50 or 100 believers there that know how yeah. to communicate to people that are of a new age mindset? Amen. And so uh, I'm all for that. Uh, that's Praise how God. I started out in the ministry. I never went to Bible school. I just started hitchhiking, preaching on college campuses Amen. with another Amen. brother in the I only have a year of Bible college, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you only have a year of Bible college. And then they, they uh, I just like you, I got, the Kick guy asked out. me to be a youth pastor and I've been in ministry ever since. So. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hey, oh. man, Pastor Mike, it's been such <laughs> yeah. a blessing. I Such love you. I could talk to you for four or five hours, but I know you got things to do. But I just we'll have to do I this think again. We almost it almost yeah. is with yeah, the I know. four. Okay, <laughs> seven hours. I don't know. But anyways, seven thank you so number. much. Uh, we just we're so blessed, and uh, I just I'm so. Hopefully you'll come back, and hopefully we haven't scared you away. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, Not at all. Just, and uh, I do want to connect you with. Uh, yes. His name is Bob LaBelle. Okay. And uh, I'm sure he'd be thrilled to get you on come on let's go Amen. and they have a really big coverage they, they've got uh well like i said forty six thousand people in 16 days have watched my testimony that i did with him wow, so, wow. amen awesome. well thank you for it, sharing about because why first we did right why christians shouldn't practice yoga and the seven reasons i no longer practice yoga so we, you have this and then I'm going to advertise all these. And then this little pamphlet, which explains when we did, you shared your testimony. And, um, and then also that free that one, that this, one, this in one. E -book, yeah, that yeah. one in an ebook form is free on both of my websites. Yeah. And your website is shreveministries.org, correct? And, and also my comparative religion website is thetruelight.net. The Make sure you get the article the, thetruelight.net. The true and then his book, In Search of the True Light, which mm. is amazing. And amazing. we went over some of that. But um, you have so many resources in that. You have books and even podcasts and um, right. all these resources, which you can find in Shreve Ministries and then In Search of the True Light, right? Or no, revealing the true light. Revealing the true light. Uh, or you're talking about the website. Yes, the, website the website is the truelight.net. Got it. And we'll put all of that on the screen so it, for everyone to see. But um, is there anything else I missed or anything you want to share before we close and have you pray for us? Uh, I think uh, one scripture is in my mind, and that's where Paul wrote the Corinthians, and he said, I fear lest even as Satan beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so also your mind should be corrupted 
from the simplicity which is in Christ. Amen. I and I think that. sometimes a lot of people get off, uh, even though they're genuine Christians, they go a little too far and they miss the simplicity which is in Christ. And this whole thing was made very simple because Amen. it was simple people Jesus Amen. ministered yeah, to in the very simple. beginning. And when we make it too complicated, we go beyond the boundaries yeah. of the real. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I, I want what's real. Amen. Praise God. And, and, and you know, I got to, I got to, I got to, I got I to gotta match that, you know, because we're trying to make this <laughs> oh logs get delicate. But I love the my verse. <laughs> I was saying this to Stephen Bancar's First Corinthians two. I think four where he says, I did not come to you with wise, with wise yeah. and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power that your faith might not rest in man's wisdom, but in God's power. Of course, you want to be intelligent, right? You've written books. You know that you want to sound, yeah. you want to be intelligent and you want to correctly divide the word of truth. But we really also want the power of God that confirms, as we said, the word of God. Amen. Amen. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm so blessed to have even been able to speak to you because at first i'm like oh this guy won't respond to me i'm just this young young girl that is doesn't know a lot but i was just so blessed with your humility and that's what we want the humility Amen. and just being able to talk to you and bring it to simple terms right for me it's like he uses the weak and foolish things i pray to confound the wise it's like that my we pray that our heart is just we want to do the will of god and our meat is to do the will of god whatever he calls us to do to step out in faith and say i'm going to do it for christ and so we've seen that in your story it's inspired us we're thankful for now for this friendship that we have and we just pray that god blesses you as you've blessed us and Amen. would you like to close us yeah, in can prayer you close us in prayer before i would and i'd like to make a commitment to both of you before i pray and that is, if you if you compile the information, and I can tell you how to do it, hmm. uh, I will send that little booklet, The Highest Adventure, Encountering mm, God, yes. to every yoga teacher and every New Age leader in Tucson. Yes, we need that. And we need that. I would, I would be very happy to Thanks do that. God. And uh, we can talk about it sometime if you'd like to orchestrate that. That'd be great. But be um, Let's pray. Amen. Father God, I thank you for this time of sharing. Mm. I thank you for this time of discussing truth. Yes, Lord. And Lord, there's nothing more important mm. than discovering the truth unless it's living the truth. Amen. Embracing the truth and then manifesting the truth. I pray that every person who listens to these uh, sessions that they will first encounter the truth, absorb it into their Amen. inner being, then become vessels full of the truth Amen. to promote the truth in a world full of deception. Amen. Let it be so in the name of the one who was crucified, Amen. buried, resurrected, and ascended into heaven. Yes, Lord, no other world religion leaders did that. Mm. Uh, Muhammad did not mm. die on a cross. Buddha did not rise from the dead. Mm. Only you did these incredible, amazing things to verify your claim that you are the Son of God, Amen. the way, the truth, and the life. May we promote that with every breath and fiber of our being in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So be it. Thank you, That's Pastor great. Mike. Wow, we love you, bro. Love you, man. Love you, and God bless yes, you. Yes, God bless Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for joining us for our part two interview with Pastor Mike Shreve. Make sure to join us next week as we will be interviewing another amazing guest. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video. Thanks for joining Calvary Conversations. See you next week. God bless.